This is San Diego News Daily. Hey there, I'm Stephen Luke. Let's get right into your top local stories in North Park. Family and friends of a man killed in a hit and run just days before Thanksgiving now know who did it. A woman in her mid 70s, a 76 year old Donna Jacobs, was arrested for hitting this man, 42 year old Stephen DeBeau. The Del Mar man died from his injuries last week. Jacobs facing charges of vehicular manslaughter as well as hit and run causing death. Her first court appearance set for just a few days away now on Thursday. People who live in Ocean Beach hope a neighborhood eyesore will be removed by the end of the day. We're talking about several abandoned campers, which they say have been left in this dirt lot by Rob Field for about a week. And now people are living in them. Yesterday morning, San Diego police placed warning signs telling the owners to vacate the area. People who live nearby say along with the campers, there are also piles of trash. It's not the first time something like this has happened here either. We cleaned it up about a year ago and it all started over again. Get into arguments with the guys to try to have them clean it up and they start cussing you out, threatening you. It doesn't work and it feels bad. The city of San Diego tells us they received complaints about the issue through the Get It Done app. This week, a controversial plan to revitalize De Anza Cove in Mission Bay will enter its final approval stage. City leaders debating how best to provide both visitor accommodations and natural habitat restoration to the area. De Anza Cove has remained vacant for several years after once being a mobile home park. NBC7's Jeanette Casada has more on this proposal and what people are saying about it. You've probably driven past De Anza Cove while driving south on Interstate 5. There's a spot that sits across SeaWorld and Fiesta Island where people come and enjoy the sunset. Today you'll find wildlife and these lights that once lit up a mobile home park. I just remember a community and family uh, neighborly. Brittany Terramosco grew up just across Mission Bay. It's been a family tradition to spend time at De Anza Cove. Hey, being able to have a bonfire and grill and everybody get together and just enjoy our family time. And now this area is being considered for a 314 acre revitalization project. What would you like to see um, developed in that area, in that space? recreational stuff. This week, the San Diego Planning Commission is set to have a hearing on a proposal about what should come to the area. Part of the project proposal includes keeping recreational uses while relocating the Mission Bay Boat and Ski Club. The proposal also mentions partially replacing the mobile home park with visitor accommodations such as RVs, cabins and other camping facilities. The proposal has raised concerns among environmentalists because they say marshal lands on the site should be preserved. 1% of that tidal wetland marsh remains in the northeast corner of the bay and it is home to endangered species, common species, all kinds of beautiful plants and animals that use that tiny little memory of the bay in order to survive. In a statement to NBC7, Camplin on the Bay and Mission Bay Resort say any plan that moves forward should take to heart the overwhelming public input over the past decade, prioritizing affordable coastal lodging and access to aquatic recreation like boating for San Diego families and visitors. Well, whether it's something that would involve like enjoying kayaking or boats or another dock, if it's tennis courts or anything that the community can enjoy, the area would be nice. Junet Quesada, NBC7. Speaking of enjoying the outdoors, meteorologist Sheena Parveen now here with a closer look at your first alert forecast. Hey Steve, as we head through the afternoon today, we're going to be just about mostly cloudy, a little warmer than yesterday because we have an offshore flow. For the inland valleys, we'll be around 77 for a high. For the coast, we'll be around the low 70s. For the mountains, a little breezy east wind, but that will actually continue tomorrow, so that's what's going to warm us up. Around 60 in the mountains, deserts in the mid 70s. So we're not going to see any rain with the cloud cover today, and the clouds will actually be leaving for tomorrow. Tomorrow at the coast, we'll be around 74, a little warmer, and then cooler as we end out the week. A string of break-ins in La Jolla prompting concern among neighbors and business owners and the LGBTQ community coming together this weekend rallying against all forms of hate, the specific message that doesn't actually involve their group that they want heard.
Looking for NBC San Diego on Roku? The easiest way to find us is with Roku voice commands. Just press the microphone button on your remote and say live TV and then say NBC San Diego. If you don't have voice commands on your remote, just scroll down to live TV, click the purple icon, go over to the left and navigate to news. Then head on down to NBC San Diego News. Once you've got us, make sure you add us to your favorites and we'll always be right there for you. NBC San Diego News on Roku. This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Stephen Luke. Welcome back. We are following breaking news at this hour as parts of Park Boulevard are shut down right now after a 14 year old boy was stabbed in the chest near a bus stop right near San Diego High School. Police say he was awake and breathing as medics arrived. Now, one of the things our crews trying to confirm right now with police is whether or not the suspect has been taken into custody or is still perhaps out on the run. We do have a crew working this story already. We'll keep you updated on NBC7.com and of course right here on TV on the News at 4. Let's talk about business owners in La Jolla's Village area concerned about a number of break-ins. Local business owners we talked to say that there were three break-ins on Wall Street just last Tuesday morning. Burger Lounge, Box Brothers, and the Nail Shop all vandalized. Some business owners say they're even considering leaving the area. You know, you pay such big money for this rent, you want to feel safe. If you don't feel safe, it's not worth the money. What can we do? We're going to install a special light that detects movement and more cameras, and that's all we can do. Police have not said whether the crimes are connected. A rise in anti-Semitism since the start of the Israel-Hamas war has an increasing number of San Diegans very concerned. Local LGBTQ community members coming together here as allies with the Jewish community last night, and they were standing against hate. A peaceful rally here in Hillcrest. This was at the intersection of Normal Street and University Avenue. The event aimed at bringing people together, showing solidarity in the ongoing fight against anti-Semitism and all forms of hate. This is the space I need to be in to show up and show my solidarity, show our solidarity, show our, our faith in humanity, and then speak out against all the treacherous murders that are going on in the Middle East with, with the Jewish individuals being murdered, in a, sitting in an innocent festival, enjoying themselves, and then murdered, and then all of the Palestinians in the Islamic communities that are being murdered and slaughtered. This, we need to end in this crisis. We need to cease, what is it, cease fire. Meantime, at a different Jewish support event, Jewish community study from last year discussed it found the Jewish community between San Diego and Temecula is more than 100,000 is strong. The study also finding 64% of Jewish adults in this area very concerned with anti-Semitism across the country. Let's talk about a surge in respiratory illnesses among kids, alarming parents in Ohio, one county even reporting this serious outbreak of pediatric pneumonia and parents are questioning if it could be connected to the recent surge of respiratory illnesses in China, particularly impacting kids. The CDC says there is, quote, zero evidence the cases are connected to any respiratory activity statewide, nationally or internationally. While we're seeing more viruses um, because it's the winter, we're not seeing anything out of the ordinary of what we would expect. Doctors with some familiar advice saying vaccinations are important to help prevent diseases like this. They also say to practice good washing of the hands and keep the kids home if they're sick. Meteorologist Sheena Parveen with a closer look at your first alert forecast now. NBC7 and Telemundo 20 responds, getting results. San Diego families promised an affordable home. We said, you know, finally, we're going to have a place where we can live in. Giving thousands to a man who said their money would also help homeless veterans. I feel sorry for the people he lied to. Now, after our investigation, there's a warrant out for his arrest. Helping San Diego families finally get justice. I really, really appreciate your work. NBC7 and Telemundo 20 responds, fighting for you. Hi there, I'm ABC 7 meteorologist Sheena Parveen. For today, it'll be mostly cloudy. We're not going to see the rain with these clouds, but you'll notice it throughout the day. We're actually going to be a little warmer, too, because of an offshore flow in the mountains. For the inland valleys, we'll be around 77 today. For the coast, low 70s, mountains around 60. For tomorrow, we're going to be even warmer than today, and that's going to come with more sunshine. Around 80 inland tomorrow, upper 70s at the coast. Later this week, though, the onshore flow returns, a cold front's going to move through, so we will be cooler later this week, but the weekend will warm back up. As a reminder, we're following that breaking news out of downtown. The latest on that and all your news at NBC7.com.